Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, two speakers tonight. Uh, so I'm going to ask you all to mute yourselves. And then once the speakers come up, they can click back on again, obviously, to talk. 248 photos I get through, so you got another good session again. One new speaker, which is always good to see. Don't forget, anybody's got anything during the week, even just one photo or summit, just bung it in. Because I've got a, a few in the middle, which people have sent in, or I've nicked. But, uh, right, we'll kick off. Also during the week, uh, if, if anybody emails me a question or on Facebook, like some people have, so I'll start off by doing that, by answering them. I will answer them when they send the questions in, and then I'll bring it up as well, just in case someone can better it. Questions for Sunday says, please, you put a pinch marker on as well. Fun guy every time you pot on the same pot, bigger pot or uh, when you when you uh, use microlyzer or fungi, if you use a pinch in a hole with a seedling, or whether you use it planting out an established plant, you only have to do it once. Once it hits that root, then it colonizes the root structure. So you only use it once, and that is for the whole life cycle of the plant. Same with fruit trees; just put one dollop in, and that was it. Right, that was the first one. Last question, this is a climbing tomato with tiny tomatoes on a vine. Do I need to take side shoots off? Nick, I'll job you as soon as I've done this. Do I need to take uh, side shoots off or because of the variety let it bush? Thank you very much. Can I open that up? Yes. What I've told uh, basically, if, if it's a uh, climb, which it is there, there's only that one cane. If you just let it go, there's going to be that much weight on it you might struggle plus uh, it's, it's like having a grapevine when I my grapevines I thin them out and you get a uh, better tasting fruit anybody else got any uh, anything else to add on that one would you pinch out the tiny toms or just let them go or whatever it, 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 uh, it doesn't it depend whether it's determinate or Indeterminate. Will they just say tiny tomatoes? Oh. I'll, I'll uh, pinch sweet them sweet. out. Small tomatoes, pinch them out the side shoots. Pinch yeah. them out, yeah. Thank you. Next one. Let's close that up a bit so I can move on. I've grown a red uh, Yuki Yuchiki Curry squash and I've started the first shoot up the fence along the wires. Today noted this as another four stems. What do I do? Cut new stems so plant concentrated on the first shoot or let it all go wild. Let's open them photos up a bit. This is uh, outside up against the fence obviously. But uh, it's just the weight of everything in it. If you just let it go. Um, I don't know whether it's going to train it up the fence. Or just across, or what? What I, what I tend to do, Mick, on on cucumbers, whether it's squash or things like that, I let yep. it grow up, pinch out, and then take a side shoot off about the third side shoot. I let it, I t I, I grow off that. That tends to work for me. Yeah. Sometimes I've never done squash. Anybody else got any views on that one? Depends how much space you've got, really. If you've got lots of space, because. It's going to be a lot of wall for that to climb up if you, if you let all the side shoots go. Yeah. But if it's going on the ground, then it depends on what space you've got, really. I tend to, if it's squash, I tend to just let them get on with it. Yeah. If you've got li little space, then you cut the side shoots off. For real. Cheers, troops. The, the, the squash that I grow, yeah. If you, if you want big ones, then you reduce it down. If, but if you just want a load of small ones, let it do its own thing. Yeah. Boston, cheers Roland. Right, this one on here is just a photo. I took this photo a, a couple of weeks ago. Just to show our lot in the sense. There's a gazebo there, which was 70 quid. Only a little chap. But uh, that's cheap, obviously, because it's in Lidl. 
But luckily during the week, Mark, who's uh, on our committee for the Gordon Club, and the plot committee soon, good man, good man. In the local um, boy and self, was it? She saw this uh, gazebo advertised. And uh, this one was three by six meter, 120 quid. And when you went round and saw it, I says, oh, go and uh, bunga, give him hackers like, and he knocked him down to 100 quid. Meaning that that'll, that's gonna be Boston. Three by six meters, meaning we're gonna get, hopefully, when you put our main marquee up for the show, this will go on the side, and we'll get all the, the cakes and the wines in here. So a good bit of work there, Mark. Good man. And that's what the chap looks like. He's got the curtains on as well on the sides. That'll be perfect. So that, that was a good little boy. And I've measured him out, and that's our back lawn, and that's where the tape is. That's the width of the chap. And it is the, the full length of the lawn, which is a, a decent size. Real. And uh, that's our new uh, home for the Gardening Club. This is Craigley Town FC, and I've got our sign up already. And he's doing a near enough an identical sign for the bottom uh, main entrance from off the main drag. So he said it. Also advertising the Craigley Town Football Club, we will be on there as well, which is another good thing for us. Thank you. Uh, right, I put this on during the week for me uh, a gladiola I felt it. They wanted a rich gladiola society, wanted an update of your gladdies. So obviously this is the one off the pot. That's my first lot I put in. And then at weekly intervals. So there's four beds of them. Uh, these lot were obviously early. They would have been for the um, early show down Wales, South Wales which was about the 8th of August but uh, I think that's knocked on the head now so that's about out the window but at least the British Gladiola Society are doing an online show again so them lot are doing there along with everything else so if you've got any gladdies um, <coughs> coming up later on you'd be able to go in the show just join the British Gladiola Society on Facebook free and if you enjoy it join the society itself right runners down the plot kath holmes yes put your hand up hiya mick um seeing the straw has just um prompted me as a warning really for, for everybody yesterday i was moving the straw around our strawberries and i got stung off um we think it was hornets they made a nest tiny hornets or wasps so uh -huh. just to say to people beware if if you have got straw around things that there might be little things nesting in it it's made a right mess of my hands and my arm and it's it's still swelling and traveling yet so i think it's a trip to the doctors tomorrow so sorry it wasn't yeah. a question it was just a wanting to share moment thanks oh uh, thanks for that kath born it's bloody oh, i ain't seen one around here for moons but yeah it's, a, it's, it's a ideal well would be ideal for anything isn't it under there a bit yeah. of moisture, a bit of warmth. Yeah. Yeah. Frighten me to death. <laughs> I ran very fast. Me off at all. <laughs> Cheers for that, Kath. Thanks. Right, runners are going up well. And me uh, sweet corn. My one sweet corn. These are still going high white. I'm still taking a uh, grub off them. We have at least two uh, veg dinners a week. Right, top of the plot. Here's my raspberries. Here's my gladi beds. This needs uh, tying up a bit. This is my blueberries. I forgot all my blueberries are in uh, large pots, sedicaceous compost, buried into the ground, meaning they do not dry out so quick. That's the same with anything in a pot. Then I'll put a nice steak in and I'll hold them upright just to help the chap out. That should be better. Look after them. Right, that's my sweet corn. See the chaps coming out. The next photo 
This is where I've shook him. Meaning, if I go on that one, let's move him down a bit. See all this chop coming off it? That's what pollinates them. That's why they say grow them in a box formation. The wind, when that uh, moves the pollen around. But all I do, I do exactly the same. But because I'm feeding the family, not the street, every time I walk past him, I knock it exactly the same as with my tomatoes in the greenhouse. When I'm walking up there, I just pass the cat, uh, knock the cane on the tomato plants. Nick, got your hand up, mate. Yeah, just a quick one. On the um, sweet corn, I, yeah. I've been gardening for many years. I've never grown them uh, because I just, I just haven't. But last year I grew them and I put five or six in, uh, in a line or in a box. And everybody said to me, I'd only get one um, corn, whatever you call it, off, off each plant. And I ended up getting three off each plant. Has anybody else had that experience? Um, I average yeah. about seven to eight. Wow. But if wow. you look after them, you, you will get nine off. Wow. How would you get that many off of your plant? What do you do different? Get decent stock, get a good brew under them and look after them. When you bury them, where the, the leaf comes up, I've mentioned this before, where, that's, where the knuckle is, bury that knuckle two inches below the ground. Then also when the next leaf dies off, then bring the earth up around the stem. Then you will get, from each knuckle, you will get new roots off it. Meaning you've got a stronger and healthier plant. Plus also, I just have one stem. Any new shoots coming off the sides, I take them out. I mean, you can leave them in, you get more cobs, but I, I want a, a, you know, a decent sized cob. I want the grub going to them. Plus, there's only me and the missus at home now, so I don't need any more. But this is just, just to prove that you don't need to grow them. You don't have to grow them in box formation, but just to help them out um, i.e. pollinating yourself. Right, well, I mentioned last week, um, last year for me was uh, bad fruit pies and everything this year, which has gone haywire, as you actually see grapevine in the tunnel. I've never had this, well, uh, the last time I had this was about nine years ago. There's hordes on them on there. Uh, obviously, these will be thinned down later on to give me a uh, better fruit these are for the show mainly uh, this year obviously I should be doing wine as well later on right these little chaps are still doing well except on our patio where we did have them on here some has come along and hit the bloody lot you can see when they have yomped them all so sorry troops you organic people well, I've got no choice, I've got to put the slug pellets down the back. Got to get rid of whatever's nicking it. Right, got me um, veg back on. Love it. That's for me and the gaffer. That's for the compost. That's for the worms. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's what it ends up like. We've got our kids to dump tonight, and their plates are like that and all. Right, anything in the basket, uh, all I've got in the basket at home is strawberries. He's telling me he wants a drink. He's wilting a bit, drying out. So obviously anything in the basket, all these little tubs or whatever, they do need watering regularly. So I'll get him a, a watering. Within 10 minutes, he was standing back up again. Right, intermediate blanch leaks that's these at the front these are well I'm going to show on that it's between 6 and 14 inches when I'm on the show bench but if you don't look closely it's, it's splitting them again and I'm getting daylight in meaning that's going to give me a green mark on the leak so I'll take my little straps off uh, the velcro from Wilco open them up and you can see where the lights got in. This is why you blanch them to keep them white. Obviously, blank is white, blank coat, whatever. 
so I'm gonna make some more uh, straps these are getting a good bit of meat on them obviously because I'm pushing out so those what I've took off I've just opened that up so that's five five and a half inches builders dam course I've rolled that out and then at eight inches to start off with that'll do also while I've got them all off I'll take one of the old uh, skins off then I'll measure all of them and I want to get a mean between all of them I want to try and get them all the same size going the same way as you can see the thrip damage earlier on uh, now controlled hopefully so the veil there where it was split just over seven so the next one which is just up there so that might be eight and three quarter so the veil jumps up an inch every time taking old, uh, old skin off flag or whatever you know, white leaf I'll just split it four ways and I'll pull it right down to the bottom and I take it right down to the root plate so that comes off the root plate as well as I take the soil right down to hit the roots and then it nice and straight because I've got a cane up in holding the, the thing upright next to him don't forget these have got another two months growing on these yet so with a bit of luck you're gonna have some good ones out of them so that's all skinned down roughly well they're near enough the, the same width and height wise as well I only need three out of them four so hoping to do it so the um, new um, outside materials going on and then my velcro and the soil is pushed up to the leak before I put that round so no light gets onto that as well and then the uh, straw goes around that stops the light getting anywhere so that is nice and sealed now once again and then he'll get checked about every two weeks or something and if it does need opening up then I'll open the chapel I, I don't it sweating inside or being too tight on the intermediate leaves right the structure itself if I go back on that one I've got these on a there's hooks in the top of there and I've just got cleats where I can pull them up and down just to hold these flags up people use bits of different systems uh, bits of wire or something but I can go up there about another two inches which I'm gonna do but as that smacks into that then that's the highest I can go that's what I'm doing from there I've got to the height which is good for me because the the blanch leaks at the back it's holding them off the ground like if, if there is any wind movement well they don't touch no soil anyway so you wouldn't get no uh, damage around that way but uh, that's it I was our goo and our first speaker tonight our first new speaker Suzanne from London Essex, yep, London. Right. All yours, right. Suzanne, welcome. Thank you very much. Right, this is basically was our pond. We had a great big four four foot deep pond and it was costing my husband said it was costing too much to run. So we was I'm in an R and what we're gonna put in it, swimming pole, whatever. And he decided that he wanted a um, water harvester, which is a great big massive water tank and I was like no what a swimming pool so anyway the water harvester won because he said I can have my greenhouse on top so that's why it won right so we had to empty this basically we had loads and loads of all the bricks we had to take out we left the back bricks in because that was obviously going to support the wall behind him so next one Nick. Um, we had to remove all the uh, great big bricks and everything which took us 10 days we was literally hammer going at it for 10 whole days taking all the rubble and everything else out so next slide was my husband working away hard and I was doing just probably just as much as him taking all the stuff in the wheelbarrows taking it round to the front of the skip so yeah I did my fair share that's me there not a very good shot but <laughs> um yeah, so we loaded it up, loaded all the stuff up, and then 
Well, this is going back a bit, but if you see the bit on the right hand side of the um, pond, there's like a bald, uh, an old door. We had to start building that up behind it because we ended up with too big a hole. So next slide. And as you can see there, it's all boarded up and we had to put all the um, sand, sand and um, soil and everything in and stamp it down. And you can see there that we've started digging it out as well. We got through about, I think it was about nine tonnes by the time we'd finished. We dug out with a, um, what do they call them? The great big things that dig. Oh, I can't think. But anyway, we was we was digging it out with um, everything we could find because it was so hard. In the, the end, once we, sorry, the digger, Sue. sorry, the digger. No, I was, no, no, my hands. No, it was um, uh, what do they call it? A thing, and like an axe sort of thing. With a yeah, spike on the end. Some side, some side of the wall. Big. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Bit, and I was using that as well. That um, big hoe. I was trying to use that, but that didn't work. But yeah, we was using a pick, and it was literally so solid that it took ages. So I say ten days it was digging it out. But anyway, next slide. Right, you can see there we. We're, digging, we're trying to dig it out. There's a big bit there. We've gone right down and we had to make sure that it was at the right level because once the tank was in, um, it has to be the right the right depth for the pipes because the pipes are only, obviously, the connections to the tank are in a certain place and, and then they're connecting to the house pipes. So we had to have it at a certain depth. What was the depth, Susan? What was the depth? Um, not sure, actually. My husband would probably know. Uh, was it? Was it about two and a half feet? Uh, Ask yes. your father. Well, no. <laughs> but yeah, all these bags we literally barrowed them by hand. Just I was backwards and forwards. I've never done so much barrowing in my life. It was bloody hard work. So anyway, this is you can see that's the depth of the hole. That's the full hole now. So and this where the where we'd um, put the the wood against that that back side to stop the wood stop and we put loads of soil and stuff in and filled it in to make it straight. It all fell down, so we ended up pulling it back out again. Three and a half foot. Three and a half foot, my husband said. So anyway, next slide. There's our tank. That's our great big water tank. And what my husband mm -hmm. did. What my husband did, he made a makeshift crane. He's got two ladders, one that's connected to the wall. <laughs> my daughter's laughing. One that's connected to the wall and then another ladder on the other side. And he bought a chain, he bought all this, he put wood across the top, you can see it. And basically we pushed it in, it was sitting on the grass behind. We pushed it over to the um, bits of wood, my husband's put two bits of wood across so that it sits there and then the wood was pulled out and then the tank was lowered with like a, a what do you call it Laura? Lock and tackle. And like a hand, it was like a hand crane, you had to wind it and it went down and then you had to pull the chain, pull the chain. and then um, I think it had to come out, come out again, didn't it? No, so it. you had to pull it up again, yeah. My twenty-year-old at the time, she pulled it out. She literally pulled the chain up, and it came out. So that's us um, steadying it. I'm st steadying one ladder and trying to steady that tank as well, which was, yeah, it was quite scary. So next slide. This is what we found in the bottom. I think we think that is probably. Um, like a gate, something that went on an old gate. But yeah, there was loads of stuff down there. So next one, right, these are the pipes that come from the water tank, from the water harvester. One goes down from the water harvester down to the drain. And then the other one comes from the wall on the house down to the water tank because it comes off of the, um, the downpipe on the house. So there's a downpipe that comes from the roof and then all of the water comes down into that pipe and goes into the tank. And then if it gets to a certain level where it's full, 
then the overflow goes back down the other pipe again and goes back down into the drain. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, all this had to be dug out as well. It wasn't just the um, just the hole as well. It was literally all of this as well. Um, so yeah, and we had to. What happened was when we did the tank, when we did the digging out, we realised that it was actually deeper than we needed. So we ended up having to backfill it with sand, so to the right height, the right depth. So what we did, we ended up with about, I think, 10 bags, 10 great big bags of sand by the time we'd finished. So yeah, it was it was like digging it out and then realising it was too deep. So all fun and games. So there you can see that the pipes are connected to the, um, to the tank there. And all the way around the edge, we had to put sand in. So next one. So that's uh, showing the um, bits of uh, what they bits of um, string, not string cloth, that was basically round the tank, so that to keep it straight. And then he pulled them out afterwards. That was all connected to the chain. Right, next slide. That was a little bird that was enjoying all the um, worms that were freshly dug up. He's sitting there enjoying himself. Right, this is the tank when it's in. Um, we started backfilling it around the edges with sand um, and was walking all the way around trying to stand it down and we've had a little tamper thing that we used to stamp it down with as well. So next slide. That was me trying to stamp it down. Not, well, I'm quite heavy I suppose, quite big, but it still needs to, needs to be quite hard. That's as you can see, we've got all the sand on it we're trying to literally fill it in as much as we can. So next slide. That's my daughter walking across the sand, trying to level it and trying to flatten it down as much as possible. All the, the kids helped as well. So that you can see where we've put all the sand in. <coughs> covered up now. Right. My daughter's got the rake. She's raking it all, all nice and level. Uh, it was nice, nice of her to help as well. Right, now there's my husband trying to level it off properly. And I'm trying to paint the wall because the wall, the walls had some sort of coating on from the previous owners and all the paint was coming off. So we basically had to repaint all the walls. So I've done the one on the right and now I'm doing this one. Because once the tank's in and my greenhouse is on top, that's it, it's hard to get to. So right, next slide. Right, we'll put the green um thick sheet on to stop weeds and then that was all the way up right up to the wall of the house and all the way around our decking as well and then we covered all of it with gravel um now that must have been i don't know it must have been easily probably 10 bags of gravel with them great big 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 um huge bags and we had that we had to have them delivered over the wall as well because you couldn't get in because uh, they're so big so we had these great big lorries coming up the side and like swinging them over the top of the wall. And because we didn't have room to have all of them at once and we didn't know how many we needed, we was having like one or two bags at a time. And then the next day we'd phone them, can we have another two bags? Can we have another two bags? So until we'd literally, you know, until we'd done it all. So right there you can see all the gravels all nice and covering it all. You wouldn't know it's there other than the, the little manhole and then the walls painted. Right, next slide. Right, my husband's now laid the um, paving slabs ready for my shed. On the left, the small one on the left is gonna be the little shed and the one on the right is gonna be my greenhouse. So he looked quite tidy there when you look at the hole that was there before. Then he's leveling, it, leveling off the, um, you can see my Leveling off the paving, and you can see my shed at the bottom of the garden, which I've painted. Nice blue. Right, next slide. That's my shed. That's the, we had to move it out of the way because it was in that position before, but obviously when we've had to dig out the, the hole, we've had to move the shed to get it out of the way, and I've had to paint it. So there you go, there's my shed, all nice. It looks really tidy. Next one. That's it again. And all this wall that's there around the net between the grass, the bricks that are there between the grass and the, um, the stones, 
I did all that as well. I did every single one of them. I had to literally dig it all out and then put the bricks in. End up running out of bricks in the end. So that goes all the way round. And then I thought, right, plants back again. Put my plants back, see if they fit. Where am I going to put them? So I did all that. Right, next one. Right, that's me. Oh, I can fit my plants next to it. That's good. So I made it look untidy again by putting all my plants in. Um, next one. And then I had to remove them again afterwards for him to do the greenhouse. So there you can see that's a shot at the back of the house. Put my little trough, that trough on the left. My husband made that, that wooden trough. He made that out of some oddments of wood. So right, next shot. Right, that's another shot of it. All the grass around the edge, we had to put some grass back there to get some turf. And it, it's never quite come back around the edge of that. I don't know why, maybe it's because there's a lot of sand underneath. But um, yeah, right, next shot. Right, there's my greenhouse going up. But I've always wanted a greenhouse. So that's it going up. Next shot. There we go. Oh, I've got a greenhouse. I'm so excited. So excited. That was like something I really wanted. And he said, we've not got enough space to have a greenhouse. And then when he said he wanted his tank, I was like, no, we don't want a tank. He said, you can have your greenhouse. Said, All right then. <laughs> so right, next one. There we go. Greenhouse finished, shed back in place, and there's the little manhole you can see. That's all that's left that you can see of the tank. And what happens is um, there's a, as I said before, there's a level in there so that if it gets to a certain height, then the water goes back down the drain. Um, so it never sort of overfills. And then if on the other side, on the, the other end of the scale, if it runs out, then you can basically, it's connected to the house. Don't ask me how, because that was my, what my husband did. But it connects to the house and there's like this little sensor and the sensor tells the box that's in the kitchen to fill up with more water. So it runs with, with um, mains water for like 45 minutes, trickling in just to get it over that low level. And then hopefully it rains again and then it fills up. I mean, the rain we've just had filled up really nice so that's really good so that's it oh you put that at the end <laughs> <laughs> he's, he said, he said send me a photo send me a photo he says so i'll send him that one <laughs> well that's the end photo isn't it excellent yeah. Suzanne. How long all right did, so how i hope you enjoyed was this this Which was thing? um two years ago oh. and and the bit that i forgot to say was um it's not only for watering plants, we've got like two taps on the back of the house. One of them is the normal tap from the mains. Yeah. The other tap is rainwater, so it's connected to that, and it's literally it's got it's got on it rainwater. So because you have to label it, obviously. Yeah. And then my husband's also connected it to the downstairs toilet, so it so the downstairs toilet uses rainwater, and it's also connected to my washing machine. So. All of my washing is done with rainwater, which obviously helps the planet as well. So, um, and ever since it's funny because when when he first wanted it, I'm like, oh, that's plenty big enough. Now I'm saying, why didn't we get the bigger one? Because there's so much you can do with it. I mean, we could connect it upstairs to the ones upstairs, the toilets upstairs as well. So, yeah, really, really good project it was. Really enjoyable. So I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Brilliant. Nigel, got your hand up. Susan, how, how big is the tank? Do you know how many gallon or litres it is? It's, yes, I do. It's, um, well, the normal water bath is 210 litres. This is 3,000 litres. That was the size that he went for. And that obviously there is other ones, but we was like, oh no, we'd have to dig out a bigger hole. But if we ever moved, then I think I would go for the biggest one we could possibly get because there's so much you can do with it. Right. You know, I mean, you can put, put all the toilets to it and your washing machine and you can't use it for drinking, obviously. Yeah. You can't use it for the dishwasher. But, um, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's a brilliant idea. I just wish that I'd seen that from the beginning and then maybe we'd have gone for the bigger one. Really nice job, that is. Really yeah. Good. yeah, we were really pleased with it in the end. If you look at the, the first photos and then you look at the end photo, it's, 
it's amazing what we did, just me and my husband. What, what sort of time? What time scale did that take to do? Well, I think it was it was about ten days digging it out, so clearing all the the rubble and everything else. That took us ten full days, and then that was he had like two weeks off, and then he had to gradually put the put the um, greenhouse up after that. So it probably took, I'd say, possibly two to three weeks. Well, I mean, that's, but it that's was just. Very... But it was. It, we were bloody hard. Yeah, really, did, really yeah. hard. I was every. I don't know how I did it. I really don't know how I did it. I think as you go on and you do stuff, you you get stronger. Yeah. And I just kept going. I mean, I can't, I can't go out there today and I'm knackered. He's probably seen it develop. Gives the encouragement to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we was really really pleased with it, and I love it out there now. I've got my greenhouse. It's full up. You say it's only the second summer. Is it, no, the first, second, it's third summer, isn't it? Yeah, third summer, I think now. But it was built in the summer, so it was June. It was built this time two years ago. So I missed out on most of the growing time. So you water summer. all your water all your plants now, using the rainwater? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I've got this, um, this container thing in um, the greenhouse that's got a connection that you can put your hose lock thing on it. So I literally yeah. bring the hose along and just clip it on and turn the tap on and it just fills up with rainwater. Is, uh, is, yeah. is, is, is the water God, pumped pumped up for your greenhouse, Susan? Or is sorry, it, sorry, Colin? Is your water pumped out when you use it for your greenhouse? Yes, it's got, a, it's got a pump in there, yeah. And that comes on automatically, does it, when you... Yeah, it's, you we had to buy it, yeah. We had trouble where it kept turning itself off, so my husband's bought... Um, this extra thing that you put inside, it's underneath the um, sink and it's a little tank so that rather than the water constantly turning on every time when you turn it on, when you want to turn the um, hose on, it literally fills up with this, it's a little tank and it fills up with a little bit of water. So it uses that water and then comes on and then fills up again. And then So it, it's only coming on, rather than coming on constantly, taking water, it, it sort of like so when you when you're using the hose now, you get like a fast rush of water, and then it drops a tiny little bit where the tank is filling up, and then it right. comes back again. Okay. So, but yeah, it's right. it's really clever the way it works. I so say the way you've got the thing on the wall, and it it's when it gets to a certain level, you know it just does it automatically. You think, oh, the tank's down to the to the to the level. You know, it's not empty, but it's down to a, a low level by the sensor, and then it literally just turns on and starts filling up with a little bit of tap water just to raise it up a bit. So yeah, right. it's very clever. Very Good clever. project, very well done. Proper job as I say down south. Yeah. Oh no, my husband don't do anything lightly. If he does it, he does it properly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Scott, it might take him, it might take him a while, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I was just asking about the pump mix. So yeah, that, that was Thank answered. You. answered. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Fan it's funny because, fantastic, though. Fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, you Thank you. Thank you. No, Good job. Not, the um, pump actually, it's, I can't think what he was doing now, it stopped stopped working. So he, he phoned up the bloke um, of the company. This is obviously just just under two years on. And, and he, he was brilliant. He said, yeah, send it back to us. We'll have a look at it. Um, and he sent us a brand new pump, the next one up, the next model up. So within a week, we had the new pump, um, a new one, the next model, so the better model. And he's put that in. So yeah, it was brilliant. This was um, water. What's it called? Um, Waterharvesting.co.uk, I think it was. Mm. So yeah, really good. That's nice. You know, first one I've seen like that. Yeah. yeah. System like that. Really it's brilliant, still, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Water, thing is, I'm not, thing is, I'm using that now. I'm not using the water butts. So we've got yeah. two. But what two water butts? I have to use them once the tank runs low like it had done with the, all the sun we'd had. We'd not had any rain, so the tank had gone low and I had uh -huh. to use the water butts. So I had to plug it all in in the, in the um, cause he's got a pump in them. He, so I had to plug it all in in the garage and go out and use them where I prefer to use the water harvester water. Cause yeah. it's easier, you just turn the tap and it's on. That looks uh, idea than my water butts. <laughs> well, yeah, mine are overflowing. It's literally soaking where they're just constantly overflowing. Yeah. We've got yeah. a big garage roof, we've got double garage and it's it's a massive great big industrial roof. 
that he put on a few years back. And the water that comes off that is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, there's loads of it. So, of course, we need probably about four or five water butts for that. Yeah. But um, we've just got the two, so it just keeps overflowing. Real. Steve, you got a question, mate? Is there just rainwater goes into the well? Just rainwater off the roof, yeah. And it's not even all of the roof. It's only part of the roof. Because we, we had um, some people around to try and change the levels of the... Um, the pipe, the um, what they called, come on, my memory's gone terrible today. Yeah, and the gutters and that, so to try and level it because obviously you have they have to go down a slight slope, like I'm trying to show you one here, like mm. that, so yeah. that the water flows down. And they weren't quite right, and they made a right pig's ear of it. So my husband ended up going up the ladder and doing it himself. Go on, then, so go on, then, so I'll be cheeky. How much would tank? Oh. Um, no, I don't mind you asking. Uh, I think it was about two, just over two thousand, I think. Which you think, if you think about it, we had to pay hundred pounds for the lorry to deliver it because they wanted us to pick it up, and we couldn't pick it up, so we had to order a lorry, a flat back lorry, we sort like commissioned them in a way, I suppose, to to go and pick up this tank for us. Mm. So this humongous, great big lorry came down, we are on a main road, but we're sort of like a housing, obviously it's a housing estate, and lorries are not meant to come down here, but they came, this great big lorry come, and he, he was like, he didn't know where, he's like, that's a, that's a like, that's, that's a residential address. He was like, you know, where am I going for, with this thing? And he had to claim that over the wall. Again, everything has to come over the wall. But yeah, I think it was about two, 2,000 and something, I think, two and maybe two and a half grand, something like that. Thanks. You've got too much money down it south, obviously. Not anymore. <laughs> He's always, not anymore, yeah. He's always wanted one. So, I just, <laughs> like I say, I just wish I'd seen the benefits of it earlier. You could have shopped around, you could have gone in with Colin off Amazon. <laughs> look at all, I already, look. I already get enough off of Amazon, like, nearly every day. Look at all these Amazon. people, so on here, that could have helped you. Well, yeah. If Mardy. it was this year, we would, they wouldn't be allowed in, would they? Mardy buggers. <laughs> Excellent, Susan. Any more questions? Oh, really enjoyed it anyway. nice, nice project, Susan. Well done. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, right, I was a bit nervous on. there talking. <laughs> Cheers, Susan. Right, these are Roger's broad beans. It's a photo of Nick. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Nick's onion. Uh, Nick's going to give us a uh, Update next week. He's one of our speakers. Good man. I thought this was a good one. I'll nick this off somebody during the week. Rare photo of Mother Wrench feeding her young. Breathtaking. Right. Only beans are called sacks or saddlebags. These were that heavy or full, the chap just about managed to take off. Thought this was another good one. Only cost cost a quid. Find a quick Barbie and get one from Tesco. Bit of a slug of just divorced snails. Yeah, let's took the house. Right, Lily's back of the garden. These just started coming through. And if I zoom in on that one, these little chaps. Always have a pair for these. When I get them off, I'll smash them with my thumbnail. And a pain in the iris. Right, the hound up the garden, where it has a piddle. Looking into this, and you can get dog rocks. No more pet urine burns on the grass. Don't work, Mick. Have you ever tried it? Many times. On your piddle or the dog? On both. Well, we tried it now because we, we bloody bought them. You put them in dog water. Correct. Paul, got a question, mate. You got your hand up? Put your hand down, you drunkard. Mick, your grass, your grass patches will come back much stronger eventually. Oh. Uh, it won't kill the grass, your dog, but it, it'll just, and, and then it, it'll come really low. 
Um, Wait. What? When your dog has a piddle, watch where he piddles and just chuck a load of water on. Then dad used to that and there's no egg, burning. No egg burning. Exactly. Egg no burning. Egg. No burning. Yeah. So watch him when he has a piss and just water it after. That's right. Book it away. Because the, the female's urine's really stronger. No noise, it just burns. As has come back a lot, uh, a lot thicker the grass now. Yeah, it does. It, try it, that. It, it, it acts as a, a fertilizer <laughs> eventually. Yeah, around the edge, but it dies in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's high nitrogen, eh? Yeah, it's just strong at the time, that's all. Just water it. Right, my little chaps, when these are finished, reading up on it, and drying off, if you want the seed, obviously, if you give like that, then the, it, all the nourishment will go into the seed. I want my nourishment to go into the bulb, so I'll take them off at root level. Front of the house, all these are finished. These are the first lot to come through. Then we'll be chopped as well. Get back on him. There's the Alstrom area. That's the one I had from Lidl two weeks ago. He's too cold, so he's doing well. So he should fill that corner by next year. And uh, I'm just waiting for another one to go in there. Cover that hole there. Right, Lupins, when they uh, see that one finished as well. And there's loads more coming up. I don't want no seed off him, so I'm going to chop him off as well. Which I have done. Because the tube are there, because there's a nice hole in it where I've chopped him off. If, if the, that gets filled up a rain, it's got a chance of rotting that. So I've took one of them off and I've wedged that in the hole to stop the rain filling up. Might not work, might, just in case. Right, blueberry back garden. The hound keeps getting close to it. It is poisonous. So I'm going to throw it behind my fence. There it is. Now we're cool get at it. Eventually, I'm going to have a raised beds like that one all the way down here. Fine, come across any of them beds for you, Mick. I'll keep looking at it. Yeah, I'll keep looking at all. Yeah. Art, we've gone from Art um, Radio to the Greatest It's Radio. This covers the 70s, 80s, and 90s, which is better for us. Brings back memories when I was in the mob. Quite a good station. All right, looking down from the, the tunnel back, and back garden. Now, I've never took this view before from here. Uh, this is near enough as far as I can go to the top of the garden. Right, we've got the shed on the left, and behind me there is uh, the shallot trench here behind us, and I've got the water bottle behind me. Then you've got the raised bed there with branch leaks, then the tunnel, uh, greenhouse, then the tunnel opposite. Because years ago, all this used to be terraced houses down here. All terraced houses have good sized back gardens. That's what we liked about this house when we come into it. Decent sized back garden. Paul, you got your lucky strapper on? Let's have a shuffle. Mm. Hope you can all see that. I'm going to say Linia have tried some muck again. Close that. I'll message you probably tomorrow or summer to ask, ask you what prize you want. You haven't taken your pig. Oh. oh Colin. <laughs> he has all, he's doing it. Hey. <laughs> Thank you very much. Colin. Well done, everybody. Right, this is me uh, eight ounce onion bed, top of the garden, tough ball. There's always one that goes uh, tits up. Can I say that? Yeah. You don't see him down there. What, what was up with him? God knows. But he don't look very well. 
So the lot is coming out. I've got my hand fork under there. And in case there's any little chaps in that saw as well, that saw gets binned as well. You have a close up at him. You see what he's, he's gone rotten here. A uh, bit of botrytis there. I can remember that from me leak and onion days years ago. Any purpling on the roots. So he went straight in the green bin. What's that, Mick? Sorry? What's that? What's what? Botulitis or something. Botrytis. It's just a uh, soul disease. But uh, supposedly, well, it really affects everything. Right. Well, he did mess us out, mate. But I think it's only, well, it's only that one onion that's dropped. It. I'm only guessing because of the per, uh, pink roots. But because I've used that hand fork to get it out, what I'm also doing now, the water butt, I've got a spare uh, watering can there. This is just used for Jay's fluid. That's just wearing off there, so I'll put it back on again with the foam pen. I just used this watering can for Jay's fluid. Don't forget it's weaker than what it used to be years ago when your grandfather had it. But I give me fork and that hole where I've got it up. I could soak in the Jay's fluid. Hoping anything it left us in there, it'll get rid of it. It will not affect the roots of these lot surrounding it because you're going nowhere near it. So there we are, all done. Little chap out. Second speaker to the night, Scott. He's going to give us an update on his plot. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Can Scott, you mate. Right, All yours. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the front of me plot. I just I just wanted it. It was a nice picture of the poached egg plants next to the uh, water trough. It just had uh, been really lovely this year. It just spread beautiful. I've got one, a bunch each side, and then some outside the polytunnel. I just, I just thought it was a nice photograph that was on. Uh, and... I planted some spuds in the polytunnel end of January. Always take a bit of a chance. And then they're usually ready before I want to put anything else in there in sort of come end of May. And that's what I had out of it. And they were beautiful. And that was two weeks ago. Yeah, for real. Yeah, beautiful. This is something I saw in an MVS mag last week, last year. And, I, and it's for making comfrey tea. And it's supposed to, you know, there's supposed to be no smell. So I looked it up, but they were like quite expensive, 65 quid online. A hose lock, make them. I thought, I'm not paying that. So I just kept an eye out. And I got, and someone come up on eBay, unwanted present for 30 quid. So I had it. And um, it's, it's really good, really good. So it comes in for the next picture, Mick, as uh, I think. <clears throat> you put your comfrey in that, that, that one there. And then you you just put 10 litres of water in. And then you put that top on and those prongs every every day, you just spin it. It's like a carousel thing. You just spin it and it stirs it all up. And uh, you don't get any smell out of it. And then there's a tap at the bottom and you just siphon it off after a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, True. it's all right. And it comes with all these different recipes for different um, teas seeds. and things. Uh. Yeah. You can use, don't have to, it doesn't, I mean, I just use it for comfrey because I grow it at the allotment, but you can use it for, for all sorts of things. I didn't realise you could use all these other things to make different feeds. So Things like nettles? Uh, yeah, nettles, but there was, I think, if you go back to the other, the, the photo with the, I think there's two. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. A bit forward a bit, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, horsetail, dandelion and lavender. And you and and it tells you in this little book that come with it, it tells you, you know, what the benefits are and, and how much to use and stuff like that, oh, and how much really? to dilute it. But yeah, it's good. But I mean, I wouldn't pay 65, 70 quid for it. But no. if you keep you keep an eye out, second hand or yeah. you know, unwanted presents and stuff, it's absolutely good. No, I can have it. Hand up, mate. No. Uh, yeah, nettles, comfrey, and bracken, fern as well. Oh, bracken. Mm. Yeah. So it's quite, it's just quite Scott, interesting. Just, yes, mate. Just a quickie, Scott. Um, on the comfrey, how long do they recommend you put in the leaves and mix it before you actually start using it? Uh, two weeks. 
Yeah, okay. but they, they say chop it up first. Chop it up when it goes in. So it's about a bucket full of comfrey that goes in there. I bring it back from the allotment and just bung it in. But we have it quite near where we sit and you can never smell it. It's never so good. So, no idea. I just, yeah, just thought it's worth sharing. Yeah, for real. Is, if you see them out and about. This, uh, this is me hydroponics planter in the greenhouse. I just thought I'd just, you know, take a couple of photos, I'll put it together. I don't know if anyone uses them or not, I don't know. But So you got on the left there, that's a, the pump that that fills with water, that holds 20 litres of water, that that um, tank, and that pumps the water across the roots. There's a little heater at the, the one at the back is the heater that heats it to 20, I've got it at 22 degrees, I think. And then that's an air stone. You don't have to have the air stone, but it aerates the water, oxygenates it. And uh, I've, I've had better results since I've had that air stone in there, so. Yeah. And that's the air pump there. Um, I've got one greenhouse that I've got power in, so that's, that's quite handy, that. So, um, yeah, so that's the, the pump and the air stone. So, yeah, and, uh, and that sits on top of that. And that, on the left, you just see the jet of water coming from the pump. And that stuff is, is called, um, uh, so a spreader mat, they call it, and you just, lay that and it's just like a fibrous mat and that's and then and that gets all wet and then the next photo i make i think you'll see uh that's that thing goes on the top of that and then you plant through that and i so said the plant roots sit on that spreader mat and they oh. the roots just grow into it it's um yeah it's fabulous absolutely oh. fabulous you can see see those that plant there that's a poblano chili but it's I mean, it's been only those, I've, I've had them in those little pots too long, really, because the spring was so long. I've been sort of feeding them, but they're going a bit, they were going a bit yellow. But it's only been in a week, and that plant is now lush green. Yeah. I abs absolutely love it in there, they do. Nigel, got your hand up. A quick one, Scott. Is that what they call the floating raft? Not sure. I, I, I was, it was, it's um, NFT, is what, is what I've, I've known it as. Um, which I'm not sure what that stands for, but um, it's a it's a greenhouse sensation. It's a greenhouse sensation kit. It's called a Vivi Grow, um, but it's okay, it's just an it, NFT yeah. planter. So. Nick, are you on up, mate? Yeah, I've got two questions. First one, uh, yeah, I use greenhouse sensation stuff quite a lot, and um, yeah. I've got several several stuff. Um, but to be honest, I think it works well. But uh, what nutrients do you use? Do you use because they send you the A and B nutrients. Yeah, yeah, I don't use those. I, no. I use those in the quad grows that, I've, that I, I have for soil. Yeah. But I use, I've got a photo actually on this, uh, to, that show it might be the next photo, Nick, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it comes up later on. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, the, the question it's called was, Green Haze. It, yeah, the question, the question was, yeah, I use quad grows and they, they work very well with uh, capillary matting and I think it's fine. It's all to do with feed, really. Yeah, it comes, yeah. I find it comes a bit of a bit onerous when you've got to it's a bit like um cannabis growers because that's what it's based on uh, yeah. that's what that's what they yeah. do i find it a bit onerous when you've got to look at your um uh, nutrient levels uh for for your standard gardener i find it a bit time consuming yeah i agree i was i was only chatting to a mate of mine last night about it and he's he's got purely nft in his greenhouse and he said why don't you have more i said well it's just a bit it, it, it takes a bit of effort and yeah. the quad grows and the chili grows I've got don't take hardly any effort and, and I'm working so yeah. I, can, I can cope with this one because it's small yeah. and it's you know yeah uh, no it's um, it's uh, because I've, I, I'm growing this year just just um, home I'll show you next week on some pictures I'm growing in several quad grows and I'm using A and B I'm using yeah. Tomorite I'm using chili um What's it called? Uh, uh, chili focused. Yeah, chili focus. I'm using yeah. some um, homegrown stuff, and to be honest, it doesn't matter. They're all doing the same. Yeah, yeah. Just a question to the guys: What use the capillary method in the reservoir tank? Once you've found you've put your mix in of your feed, do you actually stir it, or is the risk of it separating and going to the bottom or what? Um, I, I, think I, so. I, I find that. 
I find in my um, quad grows. This is what annoys me, greenhouse sensation. They've changed the design of their quad grows. It comes in two, yeah. two plant growers with a filter. And I think it's a money maker because the original ones were just a four planter cap capillary matting yeah. and they do exactly the same. I think it's just a, a, a money maker for washers, screws, yeah. filters. Yeah, and all I've, that. I've got one of the new ones, and I've separated it this year because I thought there's no point in it being. Where, where'd you get Where'd you get the um, bungs from to separate them? Oh well, I'm a plumber by trade, so I just ah, had some okay. things on the van. So I, th I think that's a rip off. I think they've done that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I've but just I said just... it's a quadro. What what with the filters? I can't see what what the idea is because you no, it's I can't. Is across from one one tank to another. You don't yeah, yeah. I, yeah. To the... yeah I, I I don't understand. I bought I bought eight of them, um, and I because I've been talking to several growers and they said yeah they work really well. And I thought actually, what do they actually do? Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's no different to that. As... From one tank to the it's just capillary got... feeds. It, 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 I, I think it's it's just a profit thing. Yeah, yeah, it could be. They do a duo grow as well, which is just two big pots on a trough, which I've got two of those as well. Um, so there's no difference between that and the quad grow. But so I separated mine this year. So yeah, and I, and I also had the um, which I haven't used this year. I had the chip, although I grew about 850. Um, ghost peppers off the ch chili planters and I, I don't use oh, them yeah. anymore either they're smaller aren't they but I have to, yeah. I've got two of those I always have a good crop out of them yeah at the end yeah. of the day it's capillary matting and it's just it's chemicals you it use yeah Thank, thanks uh, Steve. Okay. Scott okay that's alright yeah that's the stuff I use for the hydroponics just called green haze and uh, the shop um, like a druggy shop they recommend that you just halve what they say so it it asks for 40 mil per litre, uh, uh, per 10 litres. Do you not uh, think, it, do you not think most of it is the same? Uh, possibly. Uh, I've just had good results with that. I used to use the A and B from Greenhouse Sensations, but I found that a mate of mine recommended this. So I've, I've just, I prefer, I don't know why, just it seems to work okay with me and the, and the pH levels, because I have to check that as well. So again, a bit more involved. But I think I've got a picture of my pH meter. Uh, might be the next and one. Have you guys used anything, anything like maxi crop in your solutions to feed? No, I use maxi crop as a. As a only just this year I've started using it as a general feed for a lot of my plants in the soil. Uh, but now they're in. Now they're all potted up for quad grows and things like that. I mainly use it as a foliar feed. I think, Nigel, I think the problem is with maxi crop, if you look at the ingredients and a lot of them are a bit like tomorite, I use tomorite in my um, quad grows. I think if you look at the ingredients, it's, you get quite a, uh, a build up of sugar levels um, in the water, which can stunt the growth, although I've not seen it myself, but um, a lot of the hydroponic people um, reduce the sugar levels in their ingredients of the um, MPK and minerals and everything. That's the problem. It's the uplift yeah. into, into the capillary mats to the, from the roots to the capillary mats and it and increases the sugar levels. Right. Um, yeah, that's just a, that's where you fill your water up. There's like a little marker inside the tank and I just, so but in the hot weather when the plants are um, very mature, they, they can drink 10 litres in a couple of days easily because um, they're just purely being fed on, yeah. on on the water and nutrients, but yeah, it's good. It's a good system. I say I get so many more chilies off those plants than I do anything else. Uh, and that's me pH meter. That you just have to check the pH every time you make make up a ten liter solution, uh, and just keep it in the greenhouse to top up. And I have to keep checking the levels, uh, you know, the pH levels, just to make sure it doesn't go too too high. Every Between six. PH, God, if if it's low, as, well, there's a, I, there's, I use a, a silicon additive, which raises the, which apparently is a bit of a treat for the plant. So the guy in the druggy shop told me, um, and that raises the pH. And now I've got a, another solution called pH down, uh, mm. which brings it down. But I just use it a little bit at a time, like one mil at a time, and then it just. But I use, I used to use six liters of rainwater to four liters of tap water, and then put the solution in. And then that, it's about six six point five here, 
but uh, sometimes it fluctuates depending on the rainwater. So, but yeah, so it's a little, it's a little bit more involved, and that's that's after they've been in a week. I took that, I took that probably four days ago, uh, but then they, they look even better than that now. They just you can see how they just love it, absolutely love it. Very lush. So, and that's me, uh, me quad grow and me chili grow in that greenhouse and an air pot. Uh, that's, your, that's an old quad grow, isn't it? That's an old quad grow. Yeah, yeah. My other greenhouse has got the new one in. Uh, and chili grow. Yeah. yeah, chili grow. Yeah. So I've got I've got a chili grow and then I have a quad grow and the other greenhouse. But they're only small greenhouses. So, but I have just got the okay from the uh, indoors for a big greenhouse. So, <laughs> fingers crossed for next year. So this, uh, Mick, you were talking about you, you'd growing a avocado from a pip. Yeah. Well, my wife about three years ago grew two, and, and one of them got so big, it just got so big, we couldn't bring it in the house over winter. So she said, "Do you know what? I'm fed up with it." So she just cut it down to a stalk. We just it just stayed outside all winter, and you know we had a, a bad winter here you know, snow and ice and all sorts of things. And we were about to chuck it away and we spotted green growth coming out of it. You can see the shoots and then the next photo is a, is a week later. So that has yeah. last, that has survived the winter. Just, you were saying the other week, Mick, about, you know, you were about to job something and yeah. you suddenly saw a shoot. Yeah, it was just the same. Oh. So we're gonna, so we're gonna nurture that and uh, I'm gonna repot it and give it some feed and whatever. But yeah, it just shows you. Yeah, for real. So, and that. that well, can I just ask a quick thing? At that avocado, how many um, how many bits of fruit do you get off it? Well, how we never got any fruit. Oh, you never it got was, anything. Yeah, off no, it. we had it for about three years, and it just grew massive, and you know, it's so big you couldn't hardly move it. Maybe and because uh, we, so we many years I think it does. Yeah. Through, yeah, I think it needs to be in the ground, probably in it's, a it's micro tropical, climate. It's a tropical growing plant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But, but that thing is a beast that is that just keeps growing that's the prickly pear that we've been uh, we grow we don't still don't know what to do with it and it's got these wicked spines on it uh, spines uh, i wouldn't want to get pricked by one it's uh yeah just look it defies gravity it's it's mad mm -hmm. it's so, like a whale's yeah. flipper isn't it yeah it is it is Weird. yeah yeah uh, that's my other greenhouse uh and that's the that's the new quad grow which is now separated i hope they're not joined together uh, and a couple of Sorry, just, just a quick, oh, quick one. How'd you separate them? Just put some bungs in, did you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to, uh, for uh, over for overflows in toilets, they now have bungs in them instead of they used to have a standpipe. Uh, so I just used two of them, and so we used some much, some stuff called CT1. It's a good sealant that I use. It really annoys and, uh, me why they've changed the design. Yeah. No, yeah, but it's just put on the chat there it's because uh, for cheaper postage and less breaking is in post. All oh, right. Which seems um, reasonable excuse, but uh, yeah, I don't know. know. So I've got a couple of cucumbers in that large air pot, and that is, they are loving it in that. They're just going mad. Like uh, they're only sort of they're like mini cucumbers, uh, and I've got. Uh, tomatoes and a sweet pepper in the quad grow. But, uh, Are they original um, air pots or just um, replicas? Uh, no, I think the original ones. I think they're, they're not all that dear. Again, got them from the druggy shop. Um, only about two fifty each, I think. So I've got I thought three or four of them. Were expensive ones I've yeah. seen are really expensive. You're not talking about auto pots. Uh, no, the, the ones with yeah. the bubbles on, ones that got like little spikes on them, whatever they call Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, uh, the airports yeah. from Scotland, they're the original ones. Are they? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I, well, I don't know. I just buy them from a place called Future Garden. There's one yeah. near me. That, uh, they're very helpful in it. Oh, What's the capacity? The airport, I'm not sure. That's a, that's a big one. That's a, uh, I would say it's a, probably a foot across. 20 meters. Maybe, yeah. maybe. I, I don't know the leak ridge. I've got a massive one, I've got a large one, I've got a medium and a small, and I've just got different plants in each one. I usually grow um, my habaneros in them, they, I do, they just seem to like it in there. I think the best, if, if anybody wants to know, the best air pots you can get uh, from an air pot company called Scotland, they're the original people, they used all recyclable material. But right. they've got um, 
they've got an air pot that I use. It's a 50 liter. It's got um, it's got the first three layers from the top. As long as you plant it, as long as you put it the right, put the plants in the right way, they've got um, uh, moisture retention in them, which meaning basically the top three layers, and the, the, there's no hose in them. There's no air pruning for the roots, and it holds uh, moisture. Ah, okay. The only thing I've did differently this year was I've added vermiculite into the mix for the air pots uh, to see if it held more water. Yeah, I use it uh, all the time. Yeah, I've, I've never used it. I've used perlite all the time. I buy a 100 litre bag every year, uh, but I've never used a great deal of uh, vermiculite until I've been on this, you know, I've been taking tips off people on here. Uh, and so I bought some this year. So I've been using that. So. And that's the yeah that's uh, that's another chili grow underneath, and that is an old what used to be called a window grow, um, or I think it's now called a salad grow on that shelf there. And I get the my I always put jalapenos on that side of the greenhouse, so in the chili grow and the window grow, and I get a fantastic crop. I use all my jalapenos for the year uh, are grown in there, and then they just they just love it. It's not very deep, and uh, they just love it in there. I don't know why they just do so. Because it's really quite shallow. Yeah. This is down the allotment, uh, one of my beds. And if I get nine cobs off each of them, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, but I normally get a couple. Sometimes I get three off each plant. But we eat a lot of sweet corn. So, and we, you know, I uh, make a lot of soup and stuff like that sweet corn and poblano soup. So, um, use it for that. But, and then there's, I've got a courgette and a uh, squash. And I've used these land drains planted next to the squashes and the pumpkins uh, just to purely water below them so I don't water the soil uh, after today I've put straw over all that lot um, this is another bed I've just put all my spare peppers and chilies in in a couple of rows there but these at the front here that's when Jeffrey from Belgium was on one of his first talks he grew Bedford champion I think they were called yeah. And he was, he was, he said he was growing them like five in a pot and then putting them straight in the ground. So I, I like the sound of that. So I bought some seed, had a bit of trouble with germination. Some germinated and I sort of sowed again. And that's what I've got there. I've never grown onion from seed before, so I don't know if they look right or if I don't know if it, is it too was it too late to sow them. I don't know. Um, so I've never grown from seed before. Yeah, I've only okay. ever grown from sets. But they seem. You're okay. a trial and error, Scott. Yeah. Bunching onions, yeah. Now I get them in. I've still got onions to go out. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, not right. So that was just another another view of the Bedford Champions. But so I've never eat, had never had them before, but they sound nice. And then that's that's my new brassica cage that I used them the the lamp pins that uh, was it Nigel was on about last week. Uh, so we use them at work. I didn't realise. I'd never thought of using them, and uh, so I got some from work. And, uh, and there's a bit of copper pipe as my frame because I had got loads of that obviously and um, and then just hung my net over and put bricks over it so it's easy to to lift up and get to and then I've only been feeding those with nettle feed since uh, there was a, I can't remember the guy's name he was on did a bit of a sort of a market garden talk a couple of weeks ago and uh, he said he only used nettle feed for his brassicas so uh, I've been making nettle feed, um, and, and I've only been feeding with that. And they, I mean, I've never, they've never looked so healthy. Yeah. My brassicas. I've only got it's three sprout, three Brussels sprouts, and three purple sprout and broccoli. That's what I always grow. Those are my favourites. So. so, and that's me, me carrots going well in me chicken feeders. Um, the again, did them like um, Nigel said about you know you make a cone and then fill it with with um, seed compost and so yeah they're going well I'm pleased with those so far and that's the polytunnel there's sweet potatoes in the polytunnel they went out about a week ago maybe a bit longer than that but they they seem to be to be going really well so um, I'll probably train them up they reckon that you shouldn't let let them go over the ground because they can start they can if they root into the ground, that loses energy apparently. So I try and train them up a string or whatever to keep the foliage above the ground. 
So, uh, but yeah, so hopefully we'll get a good crop of them this year. I've always let yeah. my foliage go. Have you? Them. Early on, Gardener's, Gardener's World once, Gardener's Question Time, I think. So, and I just, all right. Mm. So, but when I, the, the big crop I had in the in the raised bed outside a couple of years ago, that I had, you know, the black weed suppressant and I planted through that. So it didn't matter because it wasn't going to, they weren't going to lay on the ground. So, yeah. uh, but, um, oh. yeah, so, yeah. So hopefully that'll go, it'll go well. I mean, you have top dressed with straw anyway. Yeah, Just, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? I'm doing straw across all my beds this year. I've just, I, I don't have access to the rabbit muck that you get, so uh, yeah. I have to go and buy it. It's like one pound fifty a bag from the farm shop. Oh. So I've been getting it in jibs and drabs, sort of thing. You got no stable manure? Uh, not, not, it's not so much straw. A lot of it's hay. Oh, which, um, yeah. It's not as good as it. No, it's plainly nourished. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, excellent, Scott. Okay. Good update. How many um, chilies are you doing? What varieties? Yeah, just just uh, you all or or take. Yeah, six or seven. Well, I always grow jalapenos because we use them all year round in uh, in cooking. Yeah, uh, I'm big on Mexican food. I'm, you know, we I'm mad Mexican mad. Anything Mexican, I'll cook it. Uh, so I use them and I always grow a habanero. I'm growing two different ones this year. Uh, Jamaican jerk from Sea Spring Seeds, which I've grown before, but also recently went to Simpsons. When we were down in Longleat a few weeks ago, uh, went to Simpsons Seeds Nursery and they had a paper, one called a paper lantern, which is a habanero scotch bonnet type. Uh, and it's, um, it's supposed to be quite prolific. So hopefully I'll get... I've planted that in hydroponics to see how that goes in there. So we'll see. Do you, you also make relishes, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the jalapenos, um, I smoke them and then dry them and then make uh, chipotle uh, sauce out of them. And that is that's my secret ingredient, my chili con carne. So, yeah. <laughs> Good night, <laughs> David. You got your hand up for the question? Yeah, uh, what's the recipe for the nettle feed? What quantity do you obviously uh, uh, I can't remember what it says in that booklet, but I've, down the allotment I've just got a bucket and I just chuck nettles in them and then put a brick on top. And then at the end, you know, after oh, right. three or four weeks, when it's really stinky, I'll just drain it off. But um, but I've not, I've not tried nettles in that feeder yet because uh, I'm always constantly making the comfrey feed. Scott, that, does, so. does, does the book mention using rhubarb leaves? I can't remember. I'll have a look. If uh, it does, I'll... Does anybody I'll use it. rhubarb leaves for a feed in the same way as comfrey? Mm -hmm. I do, uh... Golly. You do? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know where it's come from, but I've got it in the back of my mind that it's something for me to try, but I can't remember where I've seen it. It's on Tony's site. <clears throat> I've seen it on Tony's site because I watched it last night. We had a speak. We had a speaker on here, didn't we, a few weeks ago? Who said that he used it as a sort of a preventative as well for um, for grubs and different things as well. Because I remember I'd asked about yeah, that, and he said he used to spray, spray. Yeah. yeah. For green fly and white fly and stuff like that, he said it was really good and didn't have any issues. Uh, I know it's in the back of my mind to try it and I couldn't remember where I'd heard, heard it from, so uh, I've, uh, I've got loads of rhubarb leaves at the minute, so I might mix, mix a tank full tomorrow and see how we get on. Yeah. I have. Nick, you got your hand up, mate? You got a question? Any more questions for Scott while we get hold of him? Scott, you're the star. Thank you, sir. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Scott. Well, Cheers. Well, right, Bougainvillea of the Bad Garden. The, the stream is push. one there. Standard. They've got these two chaps here. They've just started to turn red, as you can see on the ends. 
where both the dead wood, as you can see on this one and that one, have been chopped off. But uh, I'm left outside now. The ten for the cells. There's a close up. You can see them a bit better. But we are behind uh, with everything this year. Uh, two people have got their hands up, Nick and Paul. That's a big ladybird in the last picture, eh? Was a big one, Tom. In the <laughs> end, I don't know if that is. <laughs> right, composting. I need to do uh, get some more compost up for me next trial. Lid off, carpet off. Uh, that one there, this is over a month old. And there's another one. Just under a month old. So I've got two lots uh, from down the plot which I'll mix together in an empty compost bag. I seen the back of the van ready to take home. While I'm down there, I took some photos of the, the fruit. Now you can see better now. I mentioned before, it's going to be a good year for me fruit wise. Hordes on them. And uh, got to do a bit of thinning. Where my fruits come, then I've got the, the runners going off, so I've got, I've got a job there. As we can see there, nice. As long as we have a show this year. Right, that's me done now. I can walk down uh, one side and I'll do the other side. And I'm also, me uh, black current, I'm training him uphill. Less bending when you're picking. Straubs started picking these last week as well. I think everybody's picking them now. Now we got the cold weather back. What we have here. With the goosebumps today. Right, these chaps are doing well. All the back garden. Except this one here. Uh, where the stem comes up and you got your flower. Nick, put your hand up, mate. Get your strawberries, Mac. Yes. Um, so I've gr I've grown about um, probably 160 to 200 plants in hanging baskets in my poly tunnel. Oh. First, first and second year um, with Johnny Inns number three and some horse muck in top. Uh, how long would you keep the plants? To, and when do you take, take the runners? I'm thinking myself that the second year ones are going to bin, take the runners off them. And then the first year ones, take the runners off them um, and pot them on next year. What 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 do you think about strawberries? Because the ones I've got, not being rude, but the ones I've got is, is about nearly fills me, not twice the size of that off the first year ones. Yeah. If I'm in a, well, there's only one thing I'm in a basket now, and that's the strawberries. But the plants are left in there two years. Because after that, it, it gets root bound anyway. Yeah. So, so do, would you say the fir the first year, to put, leave them for the second and get get rid? Yeah. That's what I'm doing. This is my second year this year. Yeah. So next year, I still have uh, new plants. And you take the runners off them, do you? Yeah. And what well, varieties you grow? Well, they'll they'll be off the plot. The runners off the plot. Yeah. So I'll obviously, get a stronger plants off there than what I will do on the the runners off these. And how do you take the runners off? Do you put them in the ground or in pots? They usually start the, the they run the shelf off, off, off the ground when they're oh, okay. This is the raised bed. Oh yeah. So if I see some decent, it's, it's like if I get a gap in the bed itself, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna weed at the end of the season. If there's any look um, old or ragged or the fruit's getting smaller, that that tells me basically you know restock. Yeah, I've also I've also heard that uh, uh, commercial growers, because I work um, commercially in produce, that they um, they chop the crowns off a little bit to, yeah. to, to, to put them back. I had a mate uh, years ago, but all he, he used to work on a farm. But all he used to do at the end of the season, he used to go around with a, a giant huge uh, like blowtorch, and he used to burn everything off. Yeah, just okay. to knock everything back. Well, what, about, what about feed? No arm to the plant whatsoever. What about are you feeding them? I'm, all I'm giving these was more um, well, like everything this year. When I top just the raised beds, I've got a bit of feed in there anyway, like with, with a muck or seaweed meal. 
And then the only feed during the growing season is uh, grow more. And watering daily, or just leave them to their own devices? Uh, let them to the element. I ain't got, I ain't got time to water. Okay. Not, not down the plot. On the inside of the tunnel, that's it. Cool, thanks mate. Just, just a quickie there, Nick. Yes? I can recommend a variety called Cambridge Favourite. Oh, oh, my plants, some, this is my last year now, third year, before I start the runners again. But my plants have never lost the green, even through all the winter. They stay green all year. I've got, I've got three varieties. I've got Cambridge Favourite, got Fenella and Florence. Right. Yeah, three good, uh, and the, the, the Florence are a um, a laser producer. Like now, they're just coming <laughs> into their own in the poly sun or well, I says, but um, but I can't believe the amount of fruit. Not not the amount. I mean, they normally produce between three and four hundred grams per plant, but the size of them, like it's like half the size of your hand. Mm. While you're on strawberries, can I just ask? Um, how do you stop the slugs from getting them? Because mine are in a, a, a trough that my husband built. I think I showed it on the, on the picture. And it's got straw underneath, but I went out there today and there's about four massive great big strawberries. And then when I lifted them up, they've got slugs in them. Yeah, I, th I think the biggest problem with strawberries is either slugs or um, uh, woodworm. Um, so how, how do you stop them then? How do they get up there? Uh, Cut the nice. ladder off them. <laughs> I'll tell you what, across the garden. I grew strawberries in the ground for the last four or five, well, how many years, and all I get is woodworm. Where you got wood, you'll have worm, woodworms, and they devastate your strawberries and slugs. Oh, the, my my recommendation, new brand new ones. my recommendation mm -hmm. is to put them in 14 to 16 inch um, hanging baskets, four per basket, on the out, you know the ones where you can clip in and clip out? Yeah. Yeah. Put them in there, grow them for two years, throw them away, get your runners and put them back in. These I've had... are new ones this year and they're, they're fantastic producers. It's, I've had loads of it. Well, it looks like there's loads coming through, but all the big ones, they've just literally been eaten. Yeah. I think you will. That's I don't it. think you're going to stop it straw or not. I think you, you will. Yeah. Ha hang, hang them high. You're talking about the easy plant basket, Nick. With yeah. The with the plastic compartments. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I, I, I put in, I'll, I've, I'll put in I've, my... got, I've got 40 hanging baskets in my poly tunnel, and I've got four in each one. All the fruit hang down. Mm. Um, and like what I do, I'll, I'll show you some pictures next week, but what I do is put um, some really um, heavy compost in, and then in the spring, I cover the top of the basket with horse manure. Um, and they just the fruit just hang down as long as they plenty of variation you get a really good crop. I probably picked about forty kilos of fruit out of thirty hanging baskets. Blimey. I'm wondering if the cabbage colours would help because I think you can get strawberry colours, can't you? So Hi, nematodes. Yeah. Hi, nematodes. So. Yeah. Nematodes. Yeah. This is outside though. Can you use nematodes outside? What's going? Hmm. A bit expensive. Oh, right. Yeah. I grow mine in, direct in the soil, but I don't use straw. I use, I use a, a membrane called Fabrex, and mm. I just cut a slit in there, slit in there. Yeah. Plant the plant through. I've never had any issue with slugs. Right, Fabrex, like fab, Fabrex. F-A-B-R-E-X. It's like a weed, like white lines across it. Weed suppressant, yeah, yeah. you can thing use I've that. But I, I'll tell you what, make a wooden I frame, Make a wooden frame that hangs off the ground, but you hang your baskets in them, plant your strawberry plants on, on, on the on the outside of the um on on the lower sections of the hanging baskets and you'll have perfect fruit. No nothing will touch them apart yeah. from birds. I don't know how they got up there, obviously climbed, but mm. a bullfrog. A what, Steve? A bullfrog. Bullfrog? A two foot bullfrog. Time to put bulls. I need to pick them quicker, that's what it is. Learn how to push nail. Back to me back garden. Got this chap here, these are doing well. This one shooter's coming up. 
and all I got was one flower on it. You can see it's like a stunted growth at the top, the thickness of the stem there, then all of a sudden it just throws one flower. Now I've put this on the group on the on Facebook and somebody said it's a lack of feed. But I've done exactly the same with everything else. What is it, Mick? I've got the bloody name of the chap name. It's not Nasturtium. No, it's not Nasturtium. No. no. No, I didn't mean Nasturtium. Um, Aquilinium. Delphinium. It's Delphinium. a D. Delphinium. 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 Yeah. It's amongst Delphinium, but it, it, the growth looks... Oh. Well, I've done exactly the same with everything else. And all the other plants are okay. They might grow more probably a month ago. Has the slug had the, had the top out, Mick? Uh, no, because it looks... Let's open that up if I can. I'd cut the top off and let it grow again. Mike, well, it's only him. What I've done now, I've chopped that off. Mm. But I've put that photo on the group, Delphinium uh, Facebook group. And somebody's come back and said, well, a few of them, like a feed. But it's just him, all the rest of them alright. Anyway, always summered. Right, my spuds that I've got in the pots with the slits in, and the idea of Jeffrey, those two there. Don't forget, I, I did one to my mate as well. Uh, Nigel, you still got your hand up? Two people. What was that from last time? I just took a bit of a. Growing medium and rain, and there's my taters there. So I'll earth him back up again. At least I know I've got some. Right, this is my climbing spinach. It's time for him to go out. I, I potted him on a couple of weeks back. So the tunnel back of the garden, I've got a, a bit of a gap here. So that, that's where he's going. Nice white roots, turn him round. Did I turn the plant round in the greenhouse so he get roots either side? No, I forgot. Firmed him in, bit of mic under his arrows, give him a good watering. Uh, we might come up the um, Wednesday. I'll get him these sponge I got left. Now these have been like this for two months. I've still. Uh, Obviously not solid, but there ain't no uh, baddens there. And they got nice, short, dark green shoots. And I've told him if he plants four when he gets old, he'll have them by September. And if he keeps them a lot, he plants them later on, he'll get them for Christmas. Steve, you got your hand up, mate? Steve Chambers. Yeah, what's them little white things on it, Mick? On what? On your, on your nodules. There's little white dots on them. Yeah. Don't know. Mine's covered that, in... That, that, that's, that's more shoots. No, you can see them. If you zoom in again, me. Looks like white fly. White green. Fly. Yeah. Mine's absolutely covered in them. Nah, that's, that's, new, that's new shoots coming out. Yeah, nah. What are the leaves? I'm not aphids. No, on not. the actual potato, that's actually new shoots coming out. No, to I, no. On, 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 on the, the shoot. Leaf, on the leaf. So close. There. Beautiful. On the left-hand side of the leaf. Ah, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, um, yeah. You see yeah. it? Yeah. yeah it's... Well, find out and let me know, because I've got loads on them. It does look like white. Well, are they moving about? Yeah. Looks like white fly, but smaller. Mm. I never noticed them. Well, you ain't doing you older. You're older than me, your eyesight's worse. I'll message him, ask him to have a perv. Yeah. Sorry, Mick. Well, all he's got to do is a uh, weak solution, uh, Domestus or summit. Get rid of them. Right, if you remember them blocks I had a few weeks ago. And uh, there's supposed to be blocks of peach with a hole in the top. You put a seedling in, or a seed. Mm. I did a trial with a, obviously a tomato in normal compost. And that was a trial in them blocks, where I ripped the blocks up. But the roots on that one, obviously that plant's stronger. 
on the clover but this one the roots are whiter and thicker right delphiniums in this weather the rain we've had uh, that was worse this morning I have tied these up but it just shows you well you can see the tie there there's a cane and there's a tie these were upright but because of the the rain on every flower the weight of it like you've got a so obviously I've got to tie up better than what I've been doing glad is at the bottom are doing well in that raised bed and I've got three rows still at the back on well, the top of the raised beds, top of the garden. This was another trial, leaving them free, and those was top dressed with vermiculite, and this was top dressed with straw. Next year, I should be top dressing all of them with straw. Why? Because it's cheaper and it's free. So these lot here, this cormlets at the back, which are all these. These are of singular beauty. And these, and that one, a singular beauty there as well. And these are my prims. So these went in 12th of the 5th. That one is named Sue. And there is also Essie. And uh, Lady Helen, I think the other one is. A nice yellow one. There's an Essie. I think that was a new one for this year. I sent away for some more, so I like them. And they'd run out of some. They'd sent me that one. Right, this is mother in law's. Uh, the, the poppies have come out there. They are huge and they are. I should have zoomed in and got another photo of that one. But they are corkers. So when they die off later on, I'm going to get some seed off them. But that's the side of the heads. My hands underneath holding that up. Because I know Jeffrey likes his poppies and all. And this was a Wednesday, and a visit from Gavin from South Wales. Also, Jim was in attendance. Uh, Gavin bought a bit of stuff from down there, which I can't get up here. And he also uh, had a bit of stock out the shed. Plus, uh, had a bit of dinner, and I'd get him a load of stuff out of the garage. Good to see these two again. Stuff I can't get up here, sheep muck. Dried, shredded sheep book. Beautiful. Another one I can't get, seaweed. Dried, shredded seaweed. And another one, which I haven't tried before, this was a pine mulch. Obviously, you got to mix it with everything else. But that's another good one. Also, Wednesday night, first time for moons. Well, first time for uh, nearly two of you. The missus has been out for a meal. Because I still care for her mother. But her has a. Because she's in care, has to do the test every time of visits. But we legged it out here. Love it here. Wild Moor Oak. Well known for their um, Jamaican dishes. Jerk chicken. Beautiful. Well, they, they had a new meal on. They'd done a new one. Which is a nan bread. Full of jerk chicken. Then you get a sort of different sauces and whatever. For a good night out with Sail Boy and Doreen. Uh, these are good nights because they do a, 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 a Caribbean Caribbean buffet and an entertainment Caribbean night. And the next one was the 29th of July. Not on the edge of crap. Well, they do a uh, limbo dancing competitions and all. The last time I did that, I needed like a mini. Still thinking I was 30 for a Boston night, that is. And they've got a, a poker chef and all, a jerk chicken man. I did try and zoom in, get his, his name earlier on. But obviously, the bloody lights over it, of course. Yeah. But there's quite a few good, good to this place from Brum. That's how good it is. Right, my next trial is making my own grow bag, another trial. So if you remember early on, I had three grow bags. I've emptied one because I wanted the bag. And that's where I'm going down here. So I've emptied that end of the greenhouse out. Hound's telling me where the grow bag is. Oh, good, good girl. Get all the lumps out, break them up. Because there's uh, a... <coughs> 
nothing worse than a, a young plant going in and he's using all his energy to get through a, a dry piece of peat which I mean a grow bag don't forget these are compact so help them out plus them getting air between everything as well so I have broken everything up and once again avoid piercing the bottom of the bag what a load of crap I need drainage in mine so there's two four six eight ten holes in for drainage so I've got me two different bags of compost I'm now gonna there's one good brew there's another good brew I've took all the worms out I'm now gonna fill that grow back up halfway there because I've got the length of the grow bag then to fall flat out the one I'm making here because I haven't got that full length so I've just turned the corner around so it's a bit fatter so I'm spreading them out evenly and I pull my holes in then turn it back over again the pots I'm using here 4 litre as we can see I want bottomless pots so I'm going to take the bottoms out with scissors these are helping them out so they've got a, a more of a growing root or, or decent roots on them anyway so they're going to fill that pot up and then leg it into this grow bag but they're going to have loads of space on all of them you need air ventilation around everything you plant out indoor or out get me pen felt pen put them down and mark it out I'll then cut that out I'll then push this compost inside of there filling that up so I've got a little hole there here we are pushing it out it all the way around then I've got my gap I now push that in that probably goes in an inch three quarters of an inch so you've got no uh, void between the side of there you go straight in that's pushing it on the top and that's pushing it in a bit more say about half inch three quarters of an inch so the compost is coming through and eventually that has gone in about two inches I then put a spirit level on them because I want them nice and level when the plants are in and then I start watering later on so the two on the outside I'm using clover for them so obviously they will get top just with clover because I don't want to, I want to catch all the any spillages Put an old towel around then fill the outside of the pot same size pot what the compost is going in vermiculite in the hole any little chaps are fine now go in one of the raised beds around, around the corner and the plants are gone in firmed in with finger and thumb around the outside pushing down until i have filled him then I put my label in what that one is and these were the plant side from little a couple of months ago and my chilies are going out these on the sides one with the uh, clover compost vermiculite hole again uh, this one is as Paul's that's his um, heavy, chi uh, heavy chili from last year give me a plant good man mm. Paul or the Paul, that's one of yours. Is it Jamaican soot? What's that one on the end? Bunt, bunt. He'll come in in a bit. Well, this has gone on. So I've got three plants out, and there's two more which was potted on a couple of weeks ago. Paul, Jamaican, Jamaican Scots bonnet orange. Good man, good man. It goes a it goes a tail on it. It's quite hot. It's quite hot. Oh, Boston. Then yeah. Burn your ass anyway. Good. Now I've got my other one which I'm bonsai in there. It's going away nicely. <coughs> uh, these two will be going out when I've got a spare room. Probably when the, the shots come up. Which is the uh, longest day today. So that'll be done ready for next week. Right, this is one of Keith's trailers. Uh, climbers, sorry, not trailers. This was the um, 
the one that I, that's in the pot because I've got to look after him over winter. But the little flowers, he, one has opened up. Look at him, nice little chap. That's what they. That's what they looked like originally. That's what that was all like. And now they've started opening up when he has. So when he does eventually get to the top, and he goes along me wires. Excellent. Another bit of colour. Uh, this has start putting growth on as well now. On the um, trellis. He's got a nice scent on as well. And he's so good. And my climbing spinach is now climbing. All I've done is tied a bit of string right at the top. And then I've just hung it down, wrapped it around the plant, and just tied him in one little knot there. But he's climbing up himself like um Yes Paul. Climbing spinach, where do you have that from? Uh Ling get it me. Nan Starbridge. You just pick the leaves as you want them? Yeah. And they keep producing? Yeah. Oh, I must look into getting one there. Uh, I'd never is heard that, of one of flower. Is that one of them spinach that's perennial? Not perennial. Do they call it perennial? The harder ones? The tougher ones? Or is it normal perennial. spinach? Perennial, probably. Perennial, yeah. Never heard of climbing spinach flower. Well. Lena, me on yeah. here. I think it's called Malabar. Climbing spinach, and I got it from the NEC, got seeds from the NEC two years NEC. ago. And I think they are they aren't really hardy. They like warm weather, so I'm growing mine in the greenhouse. But mine's not as big as um, mix. How did how did you get it that tall? Well, it was in the pot. Where am we? I come bloody miles, mate. He's only potted on a couple of weeks ago, but I thought I've got to get the chap out. Wow. He's only a how, big, how big do they grow? What, at the NEC, it was a wall of them. It was beautiful. And yeah. they go quite red, and you pick them as you want them. Mm. Oh. guinea pig, you love that. He's an ex fireman, Lynn. They can always get things out of <laughs> you. Uh, nice one, Steve. The, these plants would be great up a trellis, wouldn't they? You've got four yeah. of them. Just bug them up a trellis. Yeah. It's a harder. As I like my spinach. Lynn's just said that. Lynn's just said it, and he see there were a wall on them. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. He's just jammy, Lynn. Nah, he fell in muck. Right, this is a, a plant around me, mates. Uh, around jeans. I had to go around and do a bit of paperwork. But I, I didn't know the name of it. <coughs> if anybody recognises it. Looks like a camellia leaf. Camellia leaf, that is, isn't it? Is it? It's not a camellia flower? No. But the flower itself, that is like velvet. Mm. That looks like a leaf. It's flower, but not the leaf. Hmm. Yeah. I was going to look it up. It's called Amanda Villa, Mac. Just Keith, no. He just said, listen to him. Amanda Villa. Amanda Villa. Let me hold back on you. Good man. <laughs> Up the villa. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> right, Calabrese. He just started to go over, so we chopped him. But don't forget, if they do go over, all he's doing is turning into purple sprouting. You can still eat him. Just because they've gone over. I can remember that years ago. The mate said, all my stuff's going over, help yourself. So I did, but I, I waited a couple of days. And just didn't use them as purple sprouting. Keep feeding. Because if we chop his head off, he's still going to survive. So I'll get two more babbies there. Then you can see the ones underneath. Them are starting already as well. Once you've got them off, these will be half the size of the main one. And then the ones lower down, they will be half the size of these two when you pick them. Don't forget, every plant has got to survive. 
So I'm just carrying on feeding them and look after them. And get the most out on them. I right, taking the hound for a walk. Found some fox crap. So I rolled in it. Smelt like a pig on heat. And it was everywhere. So we took a collar off. Scrubbed that. Put it on the line to dry. I went bloody berserk. I had to get it off and bung it back on her. You use uh, tomato sauce, mate. What, on the hound? On the hand and the collar, it neutralises fox poo. Does it? Yeah. So much else I've got to carry around with me. Go on, bed it. I've got to carry a bucket of water. We're on the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it works, but it does. Yeah. I better write that down now and all. <laughs> Ketchup and poo bags on your, on your, <laughs> on your lead. <laughs> I see the, I took it up the... Um, local parks afternoon I stood and went with the dog and I thought crap I was going through all my pockets I had got what food bag I thought I would have used it and uh, forgot to replace it and I thought well I could always ask a wench for one if I got a spare one and, and I hadn't got the bloody guts to do it I was going to go up and say have you, have you got a spare poo bag and if she says oh I I says can you hold the dog while I go to <laughs> well, I hadn't got that I couldn't keep a straight face anymore I <laughs> I can, I can see a court case coming on here, mate. <laughs> right, flowers on me runners. Not my runners. These are Arkley's next door to me. He likes to get his uh, early. But if there is a, a, a frost forecast or anything, he's got his sheets ready here to put, put protect them. And he puts a uh, netting, old netting round them, curtains. But he, he, he's one of the first ones to picking up our street. And he's got runners all the way up the top of here as well. He does well. Decent grower. And uh, that's it, guys and gals. Speakers oh. next week. Nick Brake, I've got him. Um, and I'm trying to get hold of another speaker as well. If I call, get a volunteer. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed it tonight. If you've got a go. To all of it. If you wait, we're going to have a natter. You might learn something else. Sorry good. if I spoke too fast during my talk. I was nervous. Yeah, very good, Sue. Enjoyed that. Suzanne, I was, I was, I was, I was speaking so fast. 